Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Friday the 18th of August. Now, today I want to play you a clip from the Senate Health, Labour and Pensions uh, Committee hearing. Let's just have a brief look at this now. Uh, it basically features Senator Rand Paul. And uh, he's in conversation with the Moderna Chief Executive Officer, Stephane Banchel. Uh, now, one question that came up here is really quite interesting. Moderna paid the National Institutes of Health $400 million. $400 million. So we've got people that were actually receiving $400 million involved in the decision making for who gets uh, vaccines that, of course, they have to buy from Moderna. Quite interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to watch this clip now. Uh, do, do stick around. It only lasts for about four minutes. <laughs> Mr. Bansell, uh, Moderna recently paid NIH $400 million. Do you believe it creates a conflict of interest for the government employees who are making money now off of the vaccine to also be dictating the policy about how many times we have to take the vaccine? Good morning, Senator. Uh, indeed, we recently made, a, before Christmas last year, a $400 million payment to the NIH for uh, an old patent that they had developed, not related to COVID, but useful in the development of a COVID vaccine uh, to, to prevent for their work. Uh, it's for the US government to assess how that money Do should be Do you think it creates a conflict of interest for the same people deciding the policy of how often we have to take the vaccine to also be making money the more times we take the vaccine? Yes it, or no? This is for the government to decide. Senator. You have no opinion on whether or not it creates a conflict of interest? Is there a higher interest or a higher incidence of myocarditis among adolescent males 16 to 24 after taking your vaccine? So thank you for the question, Senator. First, let me say we care deeply about safety and we're working closely to, with the CDC and the FDA to Pretty get- much a yes or no. Is there a higher incidence of myocarditis among boys 16 to 24 after they take your vaccine? The data I've shown actually, I've seen, sorry, from the CDC actually shown that there's less myocarditis for people who get the vaccine versus who get COVID infection. You're, you're saying that for ages 16 to 24 among males who take the COVID vaccine, their risk of myocarditis is less than people who get the disease. That is my understanding. That sir. is not true. And I'd like to enter into the record six peer reviewed papers from the Journal of Vaccine, the Annals of Medicine that say the complete opposite of what you say. I also spoke with your president just last week and he readily acknowledged in private that yes, there is an increased risk of myocarditis. The fact that you can't say it in public is quite disturbing. Do you think it's scientifically sound to mandate three vaccines for adolescent boys? This is for the public health leaders to decide. Senator. You've been advocating for it. You've been interviewed and you've been advocating for boosters. Do you know when the myocarditis is most common among these adolescent boys after the second dose? When I spoke with your president, he readily acknowledged in private, yeah, that maybe there ought to be a discussion whether we ought to have one vaccine versus two versus three. If 90% of the myocarditis comes after the second dose, why don't we have a rational discussion about one? Marty McCary, a physician from Johns Hopkins, has said exactly the same thing. It's been discussed. And yet we have this ridiculous notion from the CDC. So the CDC says, and I'll ask you this question. Let's start it as a question. Your 16-year-old's had COVID. Your 16-year-old gets better and now has recovered from COVID. You vaccinate them and they get myocarditis. Are you going to give them two more vaccines? Your child, give them two more vaccines? I'm not a clinician. I will have to discuss. You have children. I do. Have you vaccinated your children? I have. How many times? Three or four times. Three or four times. We so the this. CDC recommends this, and you know, you're obviously someone who's self-interested in the outcome here. But the CDC says that if your 15, 16 year old gets COVID, recovers, takes a vaccine and gets myocarditis, is hospitalized with elevated heart enzymes and is very sick, the CDC says as soon as he gets better, vaccinate him again. You know how many American parents think that that's a rational, reasonable thing to do? Do you know how many countries don't do this for children? Uh, Sweden doesn't offer the vaccine for kids under 12 unless they're at risk for severe disease. And I agree with that. I'm not saying never on any of this. I think it's a very reasonable position to say kids at risk or have some diseases that there may be a reason for vaccinating some children. Finland doesn't recommend it for under 12 months. Norway also. England as well. 
France, Poland, Germany, Switzerland, and all vaccinate 12 and up. So we got half the world who have looked at these studies. There's a study in Israel of thousands of patients, and yet you sit here and act as if you've never heard of myocarditis, and you don't think it's an increased risk for young adolescent males, when all of the studies who isolate out people by age have found that, yes, there's an increased risk after taking your vaccine. Pfizer, too, but worse with Moderna. There's an increased risk, Senator. I was comparing it to somebody who gets COVID. Well, that's also not true either. But there's an increased risk of getting it. But even when they compare it to the disease, there are many papers out there who do, that do show that there's more of a risk of myocarditis after vaccination. So you have to weigh the risk and balances. And you are right. You're going to make less money because you're going to try. And they're already trying. The CDC's got it on their schedule. They're going to try to force all the kids in America to do this through school. But guess what? Parents aren't going to do it. They've seen that COVID is not deadly in children. And you're right, it's become less deadly over time. Your market's going down. So you aren't going to make as much money. I'm all for you making money in an honest way, but I don't like the idea that the people making the decisions in government are also receiving money and are now conflicted in their interest. Well, that was pretty interesting, wasn't it? So Senator Rand Paul, perhaps a little cynically, thinking that a mere matter of $400 million might influence decision-making. But of course, the chief executive officer of Pfizer has no view on that whatsoever. Uh, let's go on and look at the, the myocarditis as well and see how this has changed, the, um, or has this changed, the advice from the CDC on vaccinating uh, adolescent boys and young men. Really quite incredible. In my country, uh, the winter vaccination campaign starting in autumn is only going to be for the over 65s. Yet in America, they're still advising vaccines for children and young adolescent men and young men who are, we know, at most risk of myocarditis. Absolutely incredible. Um, so that, that's the bit about making money that could raise a conflict of interest. Now, when these people say thank you for the question, Senator, it means that it means the. I'll let you decide what that means. 16 to 24 year old increased myocarditis after the second dose. And the idea that you would actually well, the, the, first of all, there seems to be two different things going on here. We've, we've got the, um, I spoke with your president just last week and he readily acknowledges in private that yes, there's an increased risk of myocarditis, but that's not really being admitted publicly. Quite what is going on here is not, um, it's, it's, yeah, yeah I, th I, th I think you sense my frustration. And the idea there that Senator Paul was talking about that someone would have COVID, actually have the disease and have natural immunity, of course, then have the vaccine, have myocarditis, then go on to further vaccinations after myocarditis, to me, is just completely uh, unconscionable. If someone has a side effect from one drug, you do not, uh, unless a, a consultant specifically orders it, give that drug. Again, it's just so fundamental as to what you don't do in healthcare. Quite incredible. Let's look at the latest guidelines from the uh, CDC, FDA. So we can see... Uh, Families that are vaccinated are clearly happy and healthy. Uh, now, some of you might think that's rather crude propaganda, but this is what the this is what the uh, this is what the FDA have just put out. The Food and Drug Administration have put out on Twitter. Um, now, the guidelines here: six months to five years of age, still advising two doses of vaccine. Two doses, dose one, one dose now, uh, dose two at least four to eight weeks after dose one. That's up to uh, five years of age. So from six months to five years of age, they're advising this. Quite uh, incredible. Uh, six years and older, again, still advising two doses. And of course, this is not split into different population types. This is still for, for boys and, and young adolescent men and young men are still being advised the same way as 85-year-old as women. It's just, just quite incredible, really. Um, the governing bodies in the United States thinking this way or lack of thinking this way. And they also want you to keep up to date. So this is from the CDC website today. Stay up to date with COVID-19 vaccine. What you need to know, everyone aged six years and older should get one updated Pfizer, BioNTech or Moderna COVID-19 vaccine to stay up to date. And of course, that is not differentiated into, uh, into age groups. So I'll, I'll leave you to decide who came off best between that exchange between Rand Paul and the chief executive officer. But um, it's looking more and more farcical in my view. You'll have your own views. I won't. I'll let you make up your own mind on just what is going on. 
but for today thank you for watching